G'day my friends, it's Marty Ware here from Marty's Garden on YouTube and happyhouseandgarden.com, your favourite social site with a cool happy house and garden idea. Now yesterday I wrote an article, a short blog post, about ladybugs eating aphids. Now I'm right into beneficials being in the garden and taking control of the garden and doing the work. And in the garden, you really need to have these guys around, otherwise you can end up with infestations of aphids and scale deciding that they're going to eat your plants. So I wanted to take this a little bit further in the video than in the blog post and discuss about aphids and scale. Now firstly, uh, scale, they're like a little shell and they look like a scale on the plant and the ladybugs will eat those and some other insects will eat them as well but ladybugs love to devour them. Now they are protected by ants because the ants will share like this sooty sweet nectar that you'll see on the plants as well. And sometimes when it gets old, it goes a bit black and discolored. And the scale feed the ants that so the ants protect it and they've got this bio thing going on. But you know, you can actually, uh, lady beetles aren't too worried about ants and they will get in there and have a good chew on them. So, you know, it's a good idea to build up your uh, lady beetle and lady bug, as they call in America. We like to call them lady beetles in Australia. But uh, it's a good idea to uh, get those into the garden. And one way to get them into the garden is by planting the right plants. Now, what happens is, is our, our old methods of, of thinking. And, you know, it still works in this day of planting monocrops. But um, I'm a big person. I, well, I like to actually stick with more of a companion style garden so you don't actually have one crop or one style of plant or one type of plant all in a row so the pest can just jump from one to the next if you plant uh, a wide variety of plants in different areas and plant them around with their companions then the plants will release scents and different smells to protect the plants and they can't just jump from one plant to the next and once they finish with that one, they go, well, I'll just move over to this one and start consuming on that one. They'll get confused by the different scent and things. And when you do that, uh, you're more likely to actually introduce more beneficial insects as well because you have a wide variety of uh, scents and flowers and more different food for their, them to consume. Now, some of the favorite plants that lady beers really like are the broadleaf plants. And they like having things such as nasturtiums, cucumbers, watermelons, uh, all that type of stuff that has the wide the wide plant leaf that they can hide underneath. And if they can do that in the bad weather or in the hot sunny days or when they come out to eat uh, through that, they yeah, they, they like to hide under those. And that's how you can check your populations to see uh, if they're around. Now you get quite a lot of different colored ones here in Australia, and I'm sure you do overseas as well. And uh, what we want to do is have a wide biodiversity of uh, insects as well in the garden. Now, we probably think, well, we don't want to have any aphids, but actually we do, because if we don't have a, a couple in there or a small aphid community, then we won't have the lady beetles coming in to eat the aphids because there's nothing there for them to eat. So it's it's more keeping the, the, the balance down where they're not so much eating all, all your food, but you know, they might get a tiny, tiny little, little piece of it and you might find them every now and again when you're washing your lettuce, etc. <laughs> um, a few aphids floating around in there, but as long as you don't get infestation, um, you know, that's that's okay. Now, if you do get really bad infestation and you don't see any of the lady beetles around, then you might want to get some um, pyrethrum spray and just give them a little hit with that and, you know, and, and bump them off. But, you know, that's only in the last case of um, that there's nothing else around and you find that your food is getting consumed and overtaken by those little aphid things. So, uh, you know, that's pretty much it for this video. I just recommend that you build up those, you know, build up those beneficial insects. Find out more and do your research about beneficial insects in the garden. Now you want to create as much biodiversity as possible to have these insects come in. And, you know, don't forget that little lizards and other you know and birds and everything around in nature all play a role in making this biodiversity as well so leave a bit of water out for them so they can come in and have a drink and you'll be surprised over time 
how much this will build up and how everything will start form falling into balance. Okay, now if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll be glad to answer them the best that I can for you. Also, share this video with your friends and if you're not following me, Marty at Marty's Garden on YouTube, click that subscribe button and start following now because I, all I do is provide as much great content as I can for you guys to help you with your gardening at home, whether it be out in the backyard or in the containers or up on a rooftop. All right, have a great day, happy gardening, and if you can hear my little budgie in the background there, he just woke up because it's 6.30 a.m. in the morning here. All right, have a great day, happy gardening, and God bless. Bye for now.